Your particular part of ESF has the strongest focus on growth of any of the, the different areas within it. We all know that growth is absolutely necessary to help us get out of the, the current economic difficulties, but unemployment is still saying stubbornly high and growth is really quite scarce at the moment. From your point of view, where do you think the most promising areas for growth to come might be and how does ESF contribute to that? I think it's, it's hard to predict where it's going to come from. I know there's lots of punters will, will take a stab at it, but uh, I think because we're no longer a planning agency now, we're relying on our providers and local stakeholders to, to work together to determine what the, the local needs are and what best uh, will fit um, in the local economy. And there are clearly di different areas of growth um, across the country that, that there are opportunities in, the low carbon economy, the, um, the science and technology areas, things like that, particularly where there might be slightly higher skills required, although this cu current skills policy is more encouraging employers and uh, individuals to contribute their own contributions to, to those funding rather than using state funding or ESF. So I think the opportunities for ESF are to continue to to fund the, the bedrock of that, to get the low and basic skills in place so that those individuals, again, in terms of progression, have the opportunities then to move on and take advantages of growth when, when they appear. What are the main challenges for you as a CFO at the moment? I think at this particular point in time, one of the challenges is the perception that we're not able to respond to local needs as an agency because we're a national organisation. But we have a structure that, yes, has, has a national element to it and we have national systems and processes, but that brings us economies of scale and efficiencies that perhaps other organisations may not have. We do also have local relationship teams that are on the ground whose role is to liaise with both providers and stakeholders and to facilitate the, the freedoms and flexibilities that providers now have to work directly with those stakeholders. So I think we have got the, the structure in place to be able to respond to local needs and I think we've got the evidence in terms of lots and lots of projects that are out there that are very clearly operating at a local community level and supporting individuals in their community which is leading to, to local growth, local economic um, activity and so on. So you're playing a role with local enterprise partnerships as well as the other stakeholders? Yes, yes, we're involved in those and we've also set up um, a national stakeholder group for ESF, um, in particular looking at the next tranche of funding that I referred to and how we can make sure that we're engaging LEPs and core cities directly in the development of the specification for that and also in the evaluation criteria, so not just at the front end, but also making sure that when we select projects, we are selecting the providers that can meet those local needs and hold them to account further on down the line as they're, as they're contracting and performing to demonstrate that they are actually meeting those local needs.